Well, howdy there, Internet people. It's Bo again. So tonight we're going to talk about logical fallacies. It's uh, we wanted to do a series on this for a while, and somebody brought brought it up. So we're going to go ahead and kind of do a crash course on it tonight. But before we get into it, I'm going to tell you a story. True story. <laughs> I uh, had to go on this trip, did not want to go on it, had a bad feeling about it, and uh, required a couple of flights to get to where I was going. First flight went okay until we landed, then the tire separated from the plane um, on landing. Now, come to find out that's actually safe, like as long as it's just one tire, um, but it certainly doesn't feel safe when it's happening. Get off the plane, change planes, get on the new plane. And this one's a jet, and as we are taxiing down the runway, smoke starts kind of pouring out <laughs> of the plane. And the guy sitting next to me is like, man, I hope he doesn't take off. And I'm like, man, I didn't even realize that was an option. <laughs> and so they pull us back around, and we end up switching planes. The next plane we get on is propeller-driven and is so old there's ashtrays in the plane, and I'm not talking about the one mandated in, in, in the bathroom. I'm talking about in the armrests of the pl of the chairs. And the point of all of this is that we really need to pay our uh, aircraft maintenance crews more. And that is misleading vividness. It's something we, we see a lot of. Um, the actual story that has all of the details and actually gets your attention has nothing to do with the claim. In fact, there is nothing in that story to suggest that any of those planes were in the United States. We see this a lot um, when people are trying to villainize a certain group. Uh, well, you know, this person from Demographic X did this horrible thing and they tell it in detail. And then they'll use another logical fallacy to suggest that, well, they're all like that, which is a fallacy of composition. But we'll get there. Anyway, so one we see a lot of, especially on, in, on social media, is appeal to hypocrisy. And this has a bunch of different names, but appeal to hypocrisy is the, the easiest to pronounce. Um, so this is where the proponent, the person that's putting forth an argument, fails to live up to the standard or is perceived to fail to live up to their own ideas. Well, you know, those climate change activists drove there in an SUV, and that's fine, but that does not actually address their argument about climate change. Therefore, it's a logical fallacy. Another one is a straw man. This is where somebody takes an argument and rephrases it to weaken it and then attacks the weakened argument. A good sign that you're about to see a straw man is when somebody says, so what you're saying is, hmm, no, no, that's not what I said. <laughs> um, so sometimes you, you'll see people deconstruct an argument and that's good. Take it piece by piece. But a lot of times when people do that, they only attack the weakest piece. And that is a straw man. The genetic fallacy. Assuming that something is bad because it came from something bad. And we see this a lot. A um, good example of that would be the military developed the internet. Therefore, it's a weapon of war. No, it's not what it means. <laughs> um, the, the final product in, in, that's relevant today may not have anything to do with where it came from. Appeal to belief or appeal to majority. This is basically bandwagon. If uh, something is true because everybody believes it's true, like the world being flat, uh, appeal to tra tradition. This is one I hate, and we see a lot of this. And this is, you support a conclusion because it's always been done that way. And that is the worst reason in the world to do something a certain way, is because it's always been done that way. Um, appeal to authority. You find this a lot in the back the blue crowd. It's the argument is assumed to be true because a person in authority said it. 
Now this isn't the same as deferring to a subject matter expert. This is somebody that has authority and this is normally somebody that has authority and force. Um, so uh, an agent of government, a higher power, that is an appeal to authority. Ad hominem. This is when uh, you discredit the person rather than the idea. Example. Uh, Bo has an ugly beard and he's wrong. That's not actually an ad hominem. That's just an insult. Insults are okay when you're arguing. Bo is wrong because he has an ugly beard. That's an ad hominem. Uh, argument from ignorance. This is assuming that something is true because it can't be proven false. And this is a really dangerous one. Um, because once people start falling for this, this is when you see them start to embrace a lot of fringe theories. Donald Trump is really a giant lizard. But you won't be able to prove that because, you know, there's the secret society. Once you go down that road, it's very hard to come back. Cherry-picking data, that's pretty obvious. That's when uh, politicians normally will select specific data that has already been determined to give them the outcome they want. And we see a lot of this in a lot of debates. Um, you can have the same study and both sides will try to use it because they're only using a piece of it. Slippery slope. Now, slippery slope is not the same as a chain of events. A slippery slope is, well, if we let these people get married, well, then people will marry dogs. It's normally absurd, and there is no causal relationship between step one and step two. That's different from uh, if we pull funding from this program, people will go hungry. There's a chain of events there. The Nirvana fallacy, and this is one that I cannot beat out of myself. Um, solutions to problems have to be perfect. <laughs> if they're not perfect, you dismiss them. You're not supposed to do that. Um, I, I have a problem with that. I, I, it, it's still something I do. Um, moving the goalposts, you see this a lot on, on, on <laughs> in the comment section. Uh, well, prove that Trump spent $100 million on golf. Well, here's a source. Prove Obama didn't spend more. As soon as the requirement for evidence starts being increased, just walk away. At that point, you know you're dealing with somebody that doesn't actually care about information. <laughs> uh, false dichotomy, false dilemma. Two choices are presented, and they're presented as if they're the only two choices. You either like chicken or steak. There's no vegans in this world. We see this a lot from politicians because they try to simplify things, and they will paint one option as horrible, and the option they favor as, well, it's really your only choice. No, there's always other choices. Fallacy of composition. It's where you assume that something is true for the whole thing because it's true for a part of it. You normally find this with people that are trying to disparage a demographic. You know, this person of demographic X did this horrible thing, therefore they're all like that. It's not true. Um, divine fallacy. This is <laughs> when something incredible happens, something shocking, something just amazing the desire to attribute it to something supernatural or a a phenomenon that is beyond our control anything that that isn't present in the real world nothing that can be proven it, there's a lot of things that happen where people just don't want to accept that the world is a bad place sometimes so they attribute it to a lot of french theories and that is divine fallacy uh, let's see, argument to moderation, and that is where you assume that compromise is correct. It's not always correct. <laughs> you can have two opposing sides, and 
the one of them is going to be right. The middle ground is not always where you want to end up. And this is especially true with arguments recently about where we want to go as a, as a nation. And then on top of all of these, you have argument from fallacy, also known as the fallacy fallacy. Just because one of these fallacies was used does not mean the argument is wrong. Somebody can cherry pick data and appeal to tradition and use misleading vividness to tell you that Windows is the most popular uh, operating system. Just because they used fall fallacious arguments doesn't mean that the argument is wrong. Okay, so I know this is a little dry, but I have a feeling we're going to need this information in the coming year. Uh, anyway, it's just a thought. Y'all have a good night.